Pesach preparations. Passover is coming. It's coming and it won't be canceled. We're going to make it as hard as it, as it is to believe if, if you're listening to this video, uh, which is a few weeks before Pesach. It is easier to understand that, you know, it'll happen just like it does every year. But the goal is for us to make it happen in a smoother way, less stressful way, a calmer way. And yes, it is definitely possible to do this with children, with little children, children of all ages. And at each stage and phase of life, a woman may experience different challenges in preparing for Pesach. And the question is, how do we prepare for Pesach? Whether we have little kids around, whether we are hosting a lot of guests, whether our energy level is not the way it used to be. And um, we can definitely tempt into ways practical ways on how to welcome Pesach in a more calmer way, the way it's meant to be, and prepare pre prepare with it with a tranquility, a form of a sense of tranquility. And I'm going to share with you uh, about six practical tips at the end on how to bring in Pesach in a calmer way with the right mindset. Okay. <clears throat> The goal of Pesach is to get rid of chametz. What is chametz? Chametz is anything made out of bread products, right? Um, however, deep on a deeper level, chametz really represents the Yitzhahara. Why do we get rid of chametz? Because Hashem told us to do so. It's an obligation. We have to do it. Chametz also represents the Yetzahara, and the Yetzahara is darkness. So what do we mean by darkness? It's really exempl exemplified by three negative traits. A desire for a desire for things, meaning a lust, and a desire for, uh, for things that we don't have. Jealousy, and a desire for honor, to be respected, to be honored. You know, why do people say, same old, same old? You know, different days, same stuff. We eat maror, which which um, is uh, is given over in the Mishnah, I believe. That lettuce is really preferred to be eaten, not because it's bitter, but because it is tasteless. It is tasteless. And this is to remind us that life can seem boring. Life can seem same old, same old, one foot in front of the other. Just, you know, when you ask someone, how was your day? And they say nothing, you know, how, what did you do today? Nothing, right? And when they say nothing, you're like, okay, so, so good. So you had things your way or, you know, you accomplished nothing. That means you had an easy day. We, and, and unfortunately, we strive to have an easy, comfortable day all the time, which is not the purpose. But if we do nothing... We're living a tasteless, boring life, and that could be the way people live constantly. However, when I'm doing nothing, I, a life can seem tasteless. That means, okay, what do I do? I go to work, I pay the bills. Why do I pay the bills? Uh, I go to work so I can eat, so I can pay the bills, and, and that cycle just continues and continues and continues. The Jews were commanded to engage in tasteless, tedious, and redundant work. So if if we have the mindset of what we're doing is just tasteless, it's redundant, it's boring, it's useless, it's meaningless, then we're also living a tasteless life. When a person fills their life with light, there's nothing that they can do that is meaningless. Nothing that you can do is boring. Great people are made up of how they do Small, the small and simple things in life. That's how you actually can recognize a great person. The way they greet people, the way they do small acts of kindness. They, they put a lot of thought and meaning into it because everything is important. When a person has life and light in their life, they have true life that they are living and their life is filled with purpose. So how do we reduce stress as we prepare for Pesach? Much of the stress that comes from what we bring into Pesach prep is not what is necessary. This is the, the stress we put on ourselves as women 
and on our family. This is the stress that comes from comparing ourselves to others. This stress comes from Pesach the way our parents did it, such as cleaning the walls, drapes, and chandeliers. Remember, dust is not chametz, and our husbands and families are not the Korban Pesach. They're not going to be sacrificed, you know. It's a funny joke, but oftentimes our families may feel they could just like buy us a one-way ticket to, to Florida or somewhere because we are just impossible during the weeks before Pesach. We're edgy, we're stressed, but we have to keep in mind a lot of the stress that we put on ourselves is really man-made. It's really the stress we put on ourselves out of our own will and volition. And it's Pesach is not meant to be stressful in a negative way. It's meant to be a busy time. It's meant to be it's meant to be a mindful time. It's it's meant to be a time that we get rid of the chametz in our lives, physically and spiritually, the Yetzahara, lessen it, control it. As long as a person is alive, they will have the Yetzahara. But we, the goal is to recognize it and control it, right? That's the goal. You want to be in charge. If our families were honestly asked, do you want a mother or wife who does it all, right there's there's you know five course meal and everything is done uh, from scratch and homemade and at the same time um do you want a calmer mother calm mother honestly they would say both but they can't have both you can't do it all and do it all calmly all the time no matter what and just like stretch yourself and twist yourself into a pretzel it just doesn't work that way because we if we think that we're really lying to ourselves because we only have a certain amount of energy, certain amount of time and resources, and also financial help, whether we can afford cleaning help or not, or not, whether we have kids who can help or not, and depending on how much we have to do to prepare. If Honestly, if you, if you would ask them, they would want both, but they can't have both. So they would rather prefer the calmer mother. Being calm is being realistic with my expectations, how much time I have, the abilities that I have. Okay, one affirm affirmation that I really, really love is that the end does not justify the means. In other words, just because I'm preparing a gorgeous five-course Pesach table and hosting dozens of guests does not mean I have license to be rude to my family, right? Just because the end product is gorgeous doesn't mean the way I get to the end product has to be uh, rude and negative and everybody has to suffer. So here are my six practical tips. Number one, do not discuss with others Pesach plans. Don't ask them what they're up to, what they're doing, when they started, when they will finish. Uh, you know, this is only going to add stress to yourself. Or you're going to make unintentionally the other person feel bad because you are way ahead of them. Stick to the weather. Stick to talking about the weather. How's the weather? You know, how are the kids? Try not to talk to too many people at this time. This is a very busy time. Everybody's just talking about Pesach anyway because everyone is preparing for it and it's just a busy time. The goal is to have a, a mindset that is busy in a good way, in a meaningful way. Number two, only do what you have to do, not what you want to do. Of course, we all want a gorgeous, pristine white table with glass dishes and everything matching and literally a picture perfect, just like in the magazines. And the truth of the matter is the magazines need to make money. They need to show the gorgeous recipes. They need to show, you know, the, the, the presentation of the table and they should be continue. They should continue to have success and, and, chatzlacha, and good luck. However, we don't have to do this. It's not written anywhere. The Jewish magazines need to make money, but it, it doesn't have to be in my house. I don't have to. If I can't, I don't have to. Plasticware and disposable dishes go a long way, and it's not forbidden. You don't have to make all brand new recipes. You won't be fired from the kitchen. Um, 100%, you won't be fired from the kitchen. And um, Pesach will happen anyway, and it won't be canceled. Number three is make it fun. Engage your kids, put music, make it exciting, plan out your schedule, and really prepare for it. So one practical tip I'll share with you is that every year, um, I usually have like a box full of cool prizes that I buy right before Pesach, a few weeks before. 
And my kids who helped me for Pesach, and you know, you don't have to do, of course, spring cleaning if you're at the agent stage to do a little bit more spring cleaning. Yes, we all want new things, uh, uh, you know, everything a little bit more renovated or buy new items in the house, that's fine. But if you can't, you don't have to, right? Pesach cleaning is not spring cleaning. If you have the time, the energy, the ability, the desire to do it calmly, that nobody has to suffer for it, go right ahead. So what I do is usually I, I buy, a, you know, a bin of prizes. This is a, a bin I'll show you. This is really a hat box that I have in my house. But I put in there a bunch of prizes, which I'll open. Oops, sorry. So I, I put in there a bunch of prizes. And the prizes consist of different things for different ages. So I'll say like, for example, these are some a bunch of erasers. And the erasers are there, you know, I'm not going to give everything probably, but especially for my smaller children to help out a little bit in their own way. And so this is like, I don't know, a certain amount of time I'll, I'll allocate for a certain activity that they'll help with and they'll get a prize. Or um, I bought like a bag, right? This is a cute little bag. Also, like a cute headband, some cotton candy, right? A bunch of scrunchies. So my girls are really excited to help me. Um, and at the same time, for your older kids, you could put in like a ticket for like free Chinese meal, like if you want to have certain type of dish that they like, or like uh, extra computer time if that's what they like, a ticket for that. So you basically allocate points for everything, an amount of time, how meaning depending on how difficult the task is, that's how much, that's the, big, the bigger the prize. So if you want to take that away and incorporate that into your Pesach cleaning and prep, you're more than welcome to. Okay. Um, and make it fun. Kids should not dread that Pesach is coming. They should look forward to it. They should be excited for it. Number four, don't compare. Don't compare yourself to how other families prepare for Pesach. Everybody prepares differently. Parents who are used to preparing their way, you, you have parents who are you're obviously out of the house, you're married, and they're used to preparing their own way, but yet you learn certain halachot, certain laws that you just don't have to clean the chandeliers and you just don't have to clean the drapes, and you want to educate your parents because they're making their life harder, don't do it. If they're used to doing things their way, unless they're open to hearing your ideas, just let them have it their way. Let them. Yes, maybe they're adding a little more stress into their lives, but this is what they're used to. Can't really teach somebody anything, especially our parents, when they're used to doing things their way for many, many decades. So really try not to educate anyone and also try not to compare the way you prepare for Pesach. Number five is prepare. Prepare yourself. Traffic is a blessing. Go earlier. Go shopping earlier or very late at night. Usually store hours are changing when they're open much later hours and, and open earlier in the morning. We don't want to complain about bracha. During World War II, we lost so many Jews. And there's a there's a thought that Rabbi Zinesta Schwartz says, the yellow star transformed into yellow school buses. In other words, now we have so many more Jews, so many more children, and we shouldn't complain about bracha. All the traffic, the parking lots are full. You know, as you're waiting, and you're seeing how everybody's just going back and forth and there's so much traffic. Just give everybody a blessing. They should have a beautiful Pesach. We're lucky that we don't live in a ghost town. Just just think about what happened during Corona time just two years ago. You know, it was a ghost town. Families couldn't even be together. And it was really, really sad. So we want to be grateful and happy and not complain about bracha and prepare in advance. You can, you can either, sh sh you know, shop later order online and make your life easier in that way plan ahead the last one i'm going to share with you is continue your self-care continue your walks continue your exercise buy ready-made food if you're so hungry and you want to eat and you have to prepare for pesach you don't want to take time to cook eat for yourself you know you want to be in a good mood you come first sleep enough and take care of yourself meditate all in all, we get ready to get rid of chametz because we're getting rid of our yetzahara. I want to live an exemplary life and let the light in. So don't expect honor. 
Don't desire what people have and don't be jealous of the way other people live and what they have. In other words, we don't we don't expect honor on Pesach, especially when we're putting so much effort into it. We have to understand that the bigger picture, we're not we're not doing it for our families. We're doing it because Hashem wants us to do it. We are so happy to do it for him. We are partners with him, right? You're his loving daughter who's happy to do the bidding of the king. Don't look for compliments or for, for family to really recognize how hard you work or appreciate your ho homemade, gourmet, delicious meals. Not to be jealous of others who have more cleaning help, who have less demanding husbands, whose children are better behaved or help out more, who have a freezer full of cooked Pesach meals right after Purim. You know, it's okay. People do things differently. People are wired differently. That We have different energy levels. And Hashem gave it to us. So don't be jealous. If Hashem gave you that kind of energy level uh, ability, then it's because this is what you're meant to have. And this is how you will function best. And if that person is functioning, you know, at a higher level or doing more things, it's not because they're better. It's because they're wired differently. I Give us all a bracha. May we let our lives be full of light. And may we get rid of chametz and instead be grateful for the opportunity to prepare for Pesach because you are doing it for Hashem. Appreciating the insights of some of the insights of Rabbi Sin Esther Bela Schwartz, Leah Abramov, being and becoming, awakening awareness of your greatness and potential.